what is the criteria for selecting a dog for yourself? Like, what do you look for in a puppy? Well, um, it was a puppy. I just look for, I prefer a ferocious puppy, but it doesn't always work that way. You could have a late starter and he could still be really good. But, you know, if I, if I, if I got to make the decision at an early age, then naturally I want the puppy that's beaten up all the other puppies. If I have to, if I bought, I've got a litter on the ground, I'm only going to keep one or two and sell the rest. And I've got to make my decision right then. Then, um, that's what I'd look for, the one that was the dominant pup. But if it's a really good breed now, I, I might not sell them at an early age. I might keep them and screw them out and then keep the best one or maybe more than the best one that, that, that schooled out really well. So it just depends on, on the circumstances. But yeah, for all things being equal, I prefer a, a, a really um, tough puppy. But I wouldn't say that the, 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 the tough puppy would necessarily be the best puppy, be the best dog when they're all two years old. There might be a puppy in there that, that he's beaten up when they're, when they're little babies that when they're two years old might might be better than he is. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Um, you know, I, I, I go by adult dogs and how they how they do uh, mainly. But like I say, if, if you're picking a puppy, then you can't wait. So you have to just pick a pup. So I would pick the, um, the dominant puppy in the litter that was beating everybody up. That's, that's the puppy I would pick. But but usually I, um, I I like to let them grow up and school them because uh, I know from experience sometimes a dog that doesn't show much when he's uh, not of age, and then when he comes to age, uh, he, he's outstanding dog. So you can't really go too much by what little babies do. You have to go by what they do as an adult. I mean, it's better that way, more accurate. Also, I guess this this question would kind of be lumped into the same category. So when selecting a puppy, do you think the pedigree is just as important as the individual dog? Because I hear a lot of people say, well, the pedigree doesn't make the dog. Um, how well, important... I, I, I would say it's about 50-50. Um, the dog doesn't have a good pedigree. He could be a real good individual dog, but, but if he doesn't have that kind of dogs behind him to back him up, his odds of throwing himself are pretty slim. On the other hand, if a dog has an excellent pedigree, but he's he's not a good dog, I wouldn't want to use him either because whatever genes he had that made him an average dog, they're in him. They're in him right on top, and he's going to be the first dog in the pedigree. So... I, I want both. I want a, a solid pedigree, and I want a good dog. If I don't have both, I won't use the dog because I had a large yard. I, I, I didn't. I wasn't desperate to breed. You know, I could I could wait and breed the exact dog I wanted. And so um, uh, I go fifty fifty. Like I say, the pedigree is very important and the quality of the individual dog is very important. Like I say, if I had a dog with an excellent pedigree, but he was not a good dog, I wouldn't use him. And in reverse, if I had a dog that was an excellent dog, but he had a lousy pedigree, I still wouldn't use him. Uh, what I looked for in, 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 the, in the dogs was... Uh, um, more than anything was the gameness and the stamina. Uh, those were the two very important things. And then after that, the, the style and ability of the dog and, and, and the bite and everything. But um, like some guys are cut out to be uh, a long-distance runner, and some guys um, <laughs> could, couldn't be that. They just don't have the, uh, the natural stamina. And, and uh, the, the game is, you've got to have that. The, the game is probably number one. I, I'd say, yeah, the game is number one, and the stamina is number two, and then all the other stuff. Um, it's all important, but not as important as those two things. What was a program outside of your own that you admired the most? 
Um, uh, well, there was a, a, a Mexican, Enrique Morphine. He, he was famous for having really good dogs. His dogs were bred similar to mine. Um, Blue's Cobber has to be... Um, one of the very, very tops. I don't. I don't know that. You know, I, he's probably better than me. Uh, I would say Maurice Carver would would have to be really great. And you know, the other famous dog man like Earl Tudor. Uh, I like the Maloney dogs a lot, but the Maloney dogs were basically Tudor dogs. You know, he got his dogs. He was. He, he lived next close to Tudor, and and he got his dogs directly from Tudor, and so. Um, I like those dogs that, that Earl Tudor and later on Don Maloney had. They're, they're part of, they became part of my yard, you know. Uh, but I did business with Maloney because I, li- I liked his dogs. Um, so the Ricky Murphy and Maurice, Maurice Carver, um, he was he was early in my career at the dogs. He, he was early, and and you know later on he 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 died, but. Uh, when Louis Carver was going strong, he he had a fantastic dog yard, um, really really great dogs. And um, let me see, well, a dog that you, you know I never really thought about it much, but I've been studying them now that I got nothing else to do. Uh, the, the, I, I like those red boy dogs, even even. Um, when I was in the game, I, I, I never had one, but I admired them because they got the reputation not from being hard biters. They got the reputation from being really game dogs, and apparently they were. They, they could bite, you know, but the, um, later on I studied this the yellow dog, and uh, yeah, the dog was a grand champion, and he produced grand champions. He's, it sounded like he was really something that, uh, so I, I, I admire those dogs, those, um, Red Boy, I guess, I guess there's some chocolate blood in there too. I, I, I admire those dogs. I never, I never had any, but, um, I, that, that yellow, he, he has all the records, you know, all the records for producing the most champions and grand champions, and he's got all kinds of records, and he was grand champion himself, so. Um, there's yeah. other good ones, you know. I mean, there, there, of course, there's lots of guys who did dogs. I just can't remember them all, you know. But um, uh, but those were some of them that uh, that I I did admire. What would you say to a newcomer who wanted to get into raising and breeding pit bulls? Oh. Um, Today or back then or when? Today. Today, um, well, uh, I guess just look for the best pit bulls you can find. You know, uh, pedigree wise, and 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 possibly performance wise, if you can, you know. But it's all it's so dangerous today with with the law and everything. You have to really, you you, you know. It, People don't even want to talk about it because they don't. I don't. I don't know how things are now, but when I got busted, there was really a frenzy going on, and there, there were, there was. Well, I'll give you an example. The prosecutor wanted me to uh, have a, a half million dollar bail. Fortunately, uh, some other guy that was in charge said, "No, they can go out on their OR because." Uh, I'd never been in trouble before in my life, but that's that's what they wanted. They wanted a, a, a half million dollar bail, uh, and and they were putting people in jail for for years. I mean, more more than really serious criminals. They were trying, and, and a few unlucky guys got big long sentences. And uh, I guess if they had their way, they they they'd put them in the gas chamber. You know. Uh, so I, I don't know if things are, are, are better or worse now, but that's what I'd say to a newcomer is just, um, you know, don't get yourself in trouble with the law. You know, just whatever you got to do to, to um, keep yourself out of trouble because um, they're not very fair when you, when you, if you get 
charged with some pit bull fighting offense. Uh, don't expect a fair shake. I sure didn't get one. I, I was found not guilty, and then they took away uh, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of my property after I was found not guilty. And when I was found, when they busted me, uh, they didn't even try to attempt to, um, to adopt out my dogs. They just killed them. They killed every single one. Well, they learned how to kill my home because from what I understand, they, they gave some away to their buddies and stuff. But uh, they made sure that, uh, that I never saw them again. And um, they're nice dogs. They could have been adopted out, and they should have been returned to me because I was found not guilty. So they should have they should have kept the dog. But they didn't do that. They uh, things were really bad back then. So I don't know how they are now. Because, um, but as far as the guy just wanted to breed up good pit bulls, you just get the best dogs you can afford. Get the best ones you can. But that's that's kind of hard too, because how do you know how to um, find the best ones? I mean, er everybody's going to tell you their dogs are the best, so you just have to do some some research. And it's tough. It's tough, you know, to start out. I I got lucky because um, an experienced dog man stirred me in the right direction and got me onto some good dogs, and and then I. Uh, from that point on, I knew what a good dog was, and I uh, uh, I worked with other good dog men, and so I, I didn't um, I didn't have any junk dogs. But most people start out with pretty mediocre pit bulls, and then they may get better, or they may not. But yeah, that, that's all I could tell newcomers: uh, stay out of trouble and get the best quality dogs you can. Do your homework, do your research trying to find out where the best dogs are at and then get them and and use them for your breeding. So we, my advice is they do get busted is don't, don't go with a jury trial because juries are very easily influenced. Try, try and get a good judge if you, if you do if you do have to go to trial. You, you don't have to be guilty of anything to go to trial because I definitely wasn't guilty. I was, I was scared shitless of the law, and I was obeying the law. And they busted me anyway just because I owned pit bulls. So a guy could, keep, could do nothing wrong and still get busted. Um, if, if things, things may be different now, I don't know. It's been, I was busted in 2008, so maybe things are, are different now. But yeah, tell them uh, if, if, they, if they do get, well, if they do get busted, um, don't, don't go to the jury trial. Go get go with a, a, a judge because boy, yeah, the stuff they were trying to pull off on me, um, and the judge sees through all that, and he said that um, he's absolutely not guilty. He can't bring him up on trial ever again, um, and that and that's the end of it, you know. And because he's seen he's seen through all that BS that they were trying to put, and he knew he knew we were trying to obey the law, so. But a jury, like I say, they're, they're very easily influenced.